Shalom from Jerusalem. I'm Christine Darg, and in this program of exploits, I plan to share the legacy of the Welsh coal miner, Rhys Howes. He was an intercessor, a healer, and he was the founder of the Bible College of Wales. And even though he's gone on to be with the Lord, we spent some time with his son, Samuel, who became the president of the Bible School of Wales. And it was through our contact with Samuel Howells that we were able to look at the prayer journals of this great intercessor, Reese Howells, and to learn about his life, which is also told in the biography written by Norman Grubb called The Intercessor. During World War II, Reese Howells, in his daily intercessions with his staff, and students at his Bible college prevailed with God, I believe, to keep Hitler out of Great Britain. His intercessions also aided the return of many Jews and Jewish orphans to the Holy Land. Outside of the Holy Bible, the book that has probably most impacted my spiritual life is the biography, The Intercessor, written by Norman Grubb, which I'm going to be quoting from uh, some of his stories throughout this edition of Exploits. Through his obedience to the Holy Spirit, Reese Howells accomplished great exploits for God. He was strong because he knew God, as Daniel chapter 11 and verse 32 says. So he and his wife were able, therefore, to do great works, the works of Jesus. Reese Howells came to a saving knowledge of Jesus while he was visiting the United States of America. And because of the preaching of a Messianic Jew named Morris Rubin, it just never ceases to amaze me how God has had a faithful remnant of believing Jews in every generation. And so this man who led Reese Howells to the Lord, Reuben, had heard a voice repeating John chapter 14 and verse 6. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. While well, locked up in an insane asylum by his family for having believed in the Lord Jesus, Reuben experienced a vision of Calvary, and he witnessed every stage of the crucifixion. As he gazed upon the cross, Jesus said, Must I bear the cross alone and all the world go free? Reuben said, No. There is a cross for everyone, and there is a cross for me also. The judge asked why Reuben had been certified insane. Because he heard a voice, answered the doctor. And the judge retorted, didn't the apostle Paul also hear a voice? This is a disgrace to the American flag. So Maurice Reuben was released, and as he preached, Reese Howells, who was actually a very self-righteous Welch churchman at that stage said, I also saw the cross. And that night, as I heard Reuben preach, I received the gift of eternal life. Reese Howells never forgot that it was through a Jewish person that he found the Savior, and that he therefore owed a debt to God's chosen people, which Howells repaid in later years as the state of Israel was being birthed in prayer. Howells returned to Wales just in time for the revival of 1904. And what were the characteristics of that revival? We must be students of revival and understand what causes revival to happen. First of all, the people had to pray out hindrances to bring down the blessing. They continually dealt with sins, such as unconfessed sins and unforgiveness. After the preaching of the word, open confession of Christ brought down the blessing. Emphasis was not on an evangelist, but on the Holy Spirit, whose power was irresistible. However, because more spiritual babes were born than there were nurses and doctors to attend them, the great question of Isaiah chapter 59 went around. God saw that there was no intercessor, and he wondered why there wasn't an, an intercessor. And so the Holy Spirit began to teach Reese Howells deep spiritual principles that the Lord must live inside bodies 
who give ourselves over in unconditional surrender. We have to do away with ambition, inordinate affection. In short, the self-life has to be put to death by a decision in cold blood. We have to pay a price, the complete surrender of our will with no reserve. And of course, this is the truth of the scripture. So Reese Howells decided to do this, to totally make an unconditional surrender to God. And the first thing that the Lord dealt with in Reese Howells's life concerned the love of money. Because no man can be a man of God and also love money. Secondly, he would never have a right to decide where he was going to live and what he was going to do. The Holy Spirit said to him, where I send you, you will go. And what I say to you, you will do. He would have to live and move and have his very being in the Lord, which is again scriptural. Other issues that the Holy Spirit dealt with him in his life included his reputation, which he could no longer guard. And he therefore made an announcement to his friends. He said the same Holy Ghost who had entered the apostles on the day of Pentecost had also entered him. And he boldly said, similar results would be produced. And so here are some principles of prayer that Reese Howells learned as the Holy Spirit began to teach him after his unconditional surrender. He said, the meaning of prayer is answers to prayer. And God said, all that I ask you to do, see that you lose nothing. In other words, you are to get definite answers. And also, effective praying must be prayer guided by the Holy Spirit. Reese Howells no longer prayed for just anything that came into his mind, but he only prayed the prayers that the Holy Spirit gave him. And so that was a very economical prayer life. He was never again to ask God to answer a prayer through others that he himself could answer through him, including his money, of course. So when there was a prayer for finances, he must allow his own money to be used first. And so his pocket was really touched. And then the Lord dealt with him concerning evangelism. Hal said, I hadn't the faintest idea of the love of the Holy Spirit for a lost soul until the Lord loved one through me. And then, of course, his pride was touched because... The first person he was asked to lead to the Lord was a tramp. And so he had to go around uh, loving this tramp and walking around with this tramp. And it took him three years to lead this street urchin to the Lord. But he testified, I started at the bottom and loved just one person. And if you can learn to love just one person, you can love many. And if you learn to love many, you can love everybody. Concerning his burden for the tramps, the Lord led Reese Howells into the secret of intercession. And that is the identification of the intercessor with the one for whom he prays. So because tramps didn't have a lot of food, he was led to fast, to have only two simple meals a day of soup and bread and maybe some cheese. And of course, that was not a very substantial diet for someone who had to go down into the Welsh coals and mine all day long. And nobody around him in those days had ever seen a man who was called by the Lord to live a life of fasting and prayer. But the Holy Spirit directed him, just as I believe he's directing me and he's directing you, to live out the Bible. So the Lord said to him, whoever has a need has a claim on you. And so what was the first lesson that he learned in what's called princely giving? Another down and outer who was two years behind in his rent asked Mr. House for financial help. Reese House ran to get one year's rent, but the Holy Spirit intervened and stopped and said, did not the Savior pay all of your debt and set you free? 
So Howells realized that he was to deliver the man completely by paying the entire bill for two years so that the devil couldn't use that situation any longer to discourage that man who was a young father and a widower and he had children to watch over. Howells testified, the moment that I saw that, that I was to completely deliver this man, the joy of heaven came down on my soul and it was as if something snapped within my nature and it became truly more blessed to give than to receive. And so he learned next how to gain a position in intercession concerning healing. And if you remember uh, in the last century when he left, the healing message had not been fully recovered to the church. Now one of the scriptures that became rhema, that became living, that became life to Reese House was John chapter 15 and verse 7 very familiar words of the Savior and a command to live by. The Lord Jesus said, if you abide in me, you will ask whatever you want and it shall be granted unto you. So that was one verse that he knew that he could win revelation concerning divine healing by abiding in the Lord. And then he was arrested by the scripture in Isaiah chapter 53 and repeated in the New Testament in the Gospel of Matthew chapter 8 and verse 17 that he, Jesus, took our infirmities and bore our sicknesses. And so Reese House began to reason within himself, if Jesus also bore our sicknesses, why do we just offer, why do we not only offer healing in his name as well as offering salvation. The church's neglect of the clearly stated command in James chapter 5 to anoint the sick with oil is the cause of much suffering. And Reese Howells began to see that as he looked into James chapter 5. He saw that the sick person is to call the elders of the church. The elders will anoint the sick with oil and the Lord will raise up the sick person. And if he's committed any sins, he will be forgiven. Anything less than this he felt was not giving to the Savior the glory that Jesus deserves. And so Reese House resolved to pay any price to prove that divine healing is included in the atonement. Oh, what a price paid by this pioneer of recovery of divine healing. He testified at one point because the struggles were so great to break through in recovering the healing message. He said, I wished I could have gone on in a life of faith without ever touching this question of healing. Well, if you've just started watching this program coming to you from Jerusalem, I'm Christine Darg, and I'm talking to you about the principles of faith, and prayer that were learned in the life of the famous intercessor, Reese Howells, as outlined in the biography, The Intercessor, written by Norman Grubb. And this book has greatly impacted my life as an intercessor and as a healing evangelist. Well, Reese Howells had a prayer partner, his Uncle Dick, and together they enjoyed spirit-guided prayer with specific objects objectives, victorious travail together, and definite answers. Having a prayer partner to agree with you is one of the greatest treasures in life. If you do not have a prayer partner, believe God today to bring a person of character and integrity to be your prayer partner. Surprisingly, not all believers could see the need of total surrender to the Holy Spirit. And some of his friends and family even opposed Reese Howell's new walk with God. But God gave him a like-minded prayer partner in his Uncle Dick. But interestingly, Uncle Dick had been an invalid for 26 or 30 years. And he had accepted his crippled condition as the will of God, as so many people do. He was an example of a godly and devoted believer, yet one who needed the further infilling of the Holy Spirit, and who did not find a full surrender easy. 
Well, one morning while setting off to visit and pray with Uncle Dick, the Holy Spirit spoke to Reese House quite unexpectedly. And the Holy Spirit said, it is the Father's will to restore your uncle to complete vigor and health. Well, it seemed too good to be true and too great to believe that after years of being an invalid, his uncle would walk again as any other men. But when he arrived, Uncle Dick said, is there anything new from the Lord? And Reese Howell shared that, yes, you are going to be healed. Well, that was hard for Uncle Dick to take in. So he went out into his garden and he sought the Lord. And when he came back in, he said, yes, the Lord says I am to be healed in four and a half months. And it will be on May 15th, which was Whit Sunday. And he was to be healed, the Lord said, in memory of Pentecost when the Holy Spirit was poured out and the gifts of the Holy Spirit were transmitted by the flame of God. So boldly they made it known throughout the district and it was the talk of the town. Many pitied Uncle Dick and they said he'd allowed himself to be deceived. And then others said, well, why the wait? If he's going to be healed, why isn't he healed now? And Mr. Howells said an interesting principle that I want to share with you today. He said, people are always asking why. The only thing that could be said was, the spirits of the prophets are subject to the prophets. And God gave that date. And so if that's the way God's going to do it, that's the way God's going to do it. Although Uncle Dick grew worse, the Holy Spirit warned them not to pray. Now, isn't that interesting? Otherwise, their prayers would have been prayers of doubt. Instead of praying, they were just to praise the Lord, believe God, and prepare for the public work that would come to Uncle Dick after the healing. Well, the Lord revealed to Uncle Dick that he would be healed at 5 o'clock in the morning on May the 15th. So the night before Whit Sunday, his uncle felt just as bad as ever. And every night between 1 and 2 a.m., it had been his custom to have to get up because the pain had been so severe. Uh, he was not able to remain lying down. And so it was the same that morning, the morning that he was to be healed. But it was the last attack of the enemy who whispered to him, you may as well give up. Don't you see that you're just the same way as you've been any other night and any other morning? And besides, in this condition, you've only got three hours left, and then you're going to be known to be the fool that you are because you're not healed. But Reese Howes learned a principle that we all have to learn. One minute is quite long enough for the Lord. You can be sick one minute and well the next. Hallelujah. So he went back to bed. And confident in the Lord, you see, this is the gift of faith. Uncle Dick fell into a deep sleep. The, what I call the rest of God. The next thing he heard was the clock striking five. And guess what? Yes, he found himself perfectly whole, perfectly restored. Hallelujah. Right at the time that God told him he was going to be healed. So there was great awe in the house. As all realized that God himself had done that great act that very hour. And when the time came to walk to church, of course, the devil suggested that Uncle Dick should carry along a walking stick just in case. But he had the faith to say, get behind me, Satan. And there was great rejoicing in the chapel that day as he walked two or three miles to the chapel and demonstrate his healing. But interestingly, Reese Howes had been sent away on a journey so that nobody would receive the glory but the Lord. And he had invited two of his friends for tea who had been through Uncle Dick's district and had actually passed through the chapel and had heard no news of his healing. So that was a test. God kept Reese Howe steady until 11 p.m. on Monday night, almost more than 24 hours after the healing, when some of his friends called by under the window and happened to say, 
It was marvelous to see your Uncle Dick healed in the chapel. They thought that Reese Howells knew all about it. But the messenger who had been entrusted with the good news had never arrived. And so Reese Howells' comment on that incident was, if we believe, we can afford the delay in hearing whether or not God has manifested the healing. So Uncle Dick was appointed an honorary missionary in his district, and he never experienced a day's sickness after his healing until the Lord called him home at a ripe old age. A further commission that Reese Howells received from the Lord was to learn how to bind the strong men and to gain a place in intercession. How did he learn this? He was to pray in a notorious female ringleader by Christmas Day to get her saved, but he was to use no personal influence. He was only to reach her by way of prayer. So now he was looking to prove the Lord's own words in the Gospels about binding the strong man and stealing his goods because the Lord has given us authority to bind and to loose Satan. Now in order to accomplish this exploit through prayer, the Holy Spirit again gave him John chapter 15 and verse 7. If you abide in me, Jesus said, and if my words abide in you, you can ask what you will, whatever you want, and it shall be done unto you. Why is this? Because when the Lord's words abide in us, we know what his will is, and we know that we're praying according to his will. And it depends upon abiding, obeying, in other words, obeying whatever the Lord tells us to do. So this key text makes it plain that the promise is unlimited, but its fulfillment depends on abiding in the Lord. And that is why in all cases of intercession, Mr. Howes constantly spoke of guarding his place of abiding. A companion key verse in the New Testament is 1 John chapter 2 and verse 6. He who says that he abides in the Lord ought also to walk even as the Lord walked. In other words, it meant being willing for the Holy Spirit to live through him, the life of the Savior, the very life the Savior would have lived. Specific obedience would be called for during a set time of waiting upon God every day while the intercession lasted. And he would not come into God's presence again until he had obeyed everything the Lord had given him on the previous day. As Rees Howes learned to give prompt obedience to the Holy Spirit in all things, there were wonderful times of fellowship. And after six weeks, the Holy Spirit told him that the abiding was complete and the victory was assured that this notorious woman would be saved. Well, she made her first move toward the Lord by actually attending an open-air gospel meeting. It was now a case, the Lord said, of just praising God by faith and waiting for the victory. So in the remaining six weeks before Christmas, when the Holy Spirit said the woman would be saved because of his prayers, the Holy Spirit did not allow Reese House to actually pray for her any longer. And this is an interesting principle. The devil even pressed him on the need to pray, saying, you need to pray, you need to pray. But, he, but Reese Howe said, no. If I would have prayed at that point, it would have been a prayer of doubt. Isn't that interesting? During that time, there was no outward sign of repentance in the woman at all. But Reese Howe believed God, and Christmas morning came, and he had the experience like Moses had in telling a thing beforehand because God gave him a wonderful Christmas present. There was a noisy cottage meeting in Wales and no sense of the kind of atmosphere which would influence a person to repent. But right in the middle of the meeting, suddenly this notorious woman fell on her knees, cried out to mercy and was saved. Hallelujah. What is an intercessor? 
that God seeks intercessors but seldom finds them is seen in the verse in Isaiah that I mentioned earlier that God sought for a man and wondered that there was no intercessor. And God even makes a protest of disappointment through the prophet Ezekiel when he said, I sought for a man among them that should make up the hedge and stand in the gap before me for the land, but I found none. Some people think that intercession is only intensified prayer. And it is, as long as you emphasize the word intensify. For Reese Howe says there are three things to be seen in an intercessor which are not necessarily found in ordinary prayer. Number one, identification with the person and their needs. Number two, agony in prayer. And three, authority. He also taught that many people can be a prayer warrior, but to be an intercessor, you have to keep praying until you see the answer. That's the difference. You could ring me up or uh, email me through my website at www.exploits.tv and ask me to pray for a need in your family. And if I do that, I would be a prayer warrior. But intercession is when you take up a prayer cause for God and you're never able to stop praying for that prayer until you see it accomplished. So you could ask me to pray for your family. I could pray and that prayer, as far as I'm concerned, would be finished. But on the other hand, if God asks me to pray, for example, for the salvation of this nation, Israel, that I'm standing in right now, that intercession will perhaps be a lifetime of intercession until the veil is lifted and all of Israel is saved. Well, we've only begun to touch on the magnificent studies of the intercessory life of Reese Howells in this edition of Exploits. But I want to encourage you to become an intercessor and to do exploits for God in prayer. And if you would like to have more information on how to be an intercessor, on how to be a watchman upon the walls of this city, Jerusalem, contact me through our website at www.exploits.tv and come up to Jerusalem with us and we will give you opportunities to minister to the local community, to the Jews and to the Arabs. And you will experience the adventures of God in prayer as you do that. Well, I'm Christine Dark, and until next time, Shalom from Jerusalem.